نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم و علی علی و اصحاب اجمعین رب اشرح لی صدری و اسر لی امری و اہل الاقدم اللسانی افقہ قولی و جعل وزیر من اہلی آمین رب العالمین سبحان کل علم لنا اللہ ما علمتنا ان کا انت العلیم الحکیم اللہم الحمنی رشدی و عیتی من شر نفسی آمین رب العالمین ڈیر میز سسٹرز اور لائک ٹو ویلکم یو آل ود اسلامک گریٹنگز اف السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی بی وٹنس دیٹ دیر از نو گاڈ بٹ اللہ ہو از وداؤٹ اینی پارٹنرز اینڈ آئی بی وٹنس دیٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم از دا لاسٹ اینڈ فائنل میسنجر آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ اینڈ مے اینڈ پیس اینڈ بلیسنگس بی اپان ہز فیملی ہز کمپینینس اینڈ آن آل دوز ہو فالو رائچیسنیس انٹل دا ڈے آف ججمنٹ یہ اخوان مسلمین وی آر گوئنگ تھرو دا ڈیز آف دا الحجہ As in the previous khutbah, we spoke about the importance of these days. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in the narration of Sahih Bukhari that there are no days during which the righteous actions, the good deeds are dear to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or are pleasing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala than these days, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So the companions asked that, Ya Rasulullah, even if somebody would go out and fight in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, not even for that cause unless somebody goes out, fought, lost his life, lost his wealth and didn't come back. So, Khan Muslimin, as we discussed that these days are the opportunity for us after Ramadan to do the good deeds, to get as much rewards as possible. Inshallah, in few days, we'll have the day of Arafah. That would be 9th of Dhul Hijjah. Today is 23rd. So in three days from now, the fourth day, that will be on June 27th, would be the day of Arafah. So what do people do on this day? So actually, the people who have went to Hajj, the pilgrims, they would all gather on the plain of Arafah and they would be combining their Dhuhr and Asr over there. They will be seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They'll be st- spending the entire day making du'as, supplications to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking forgiveness of their sins. And this is the most important ritual of the Hajj. At, as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the narration of Nisai, that Hajj is Arafah. In other words, the person who do not go to Arafah, his Hajj is not valid. Yom Arafah is the day of Eid for the people who are doing the Hajj, who are in that place. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the narration of Muslim that the Yom Al-Arafah that is the 9th Dhul Hijjah, and then Yawm Al-Nahar, that is the day of sacrifice, and Ayyam Al-Tashriq, that is 11th, 12th, and 13th of Dhul Hijjah, they are Eid for us. So, Ikhwan Muslimin, we must not fast in these days. What is the importance of this day? So, according to the Mufassireen, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Buruj, chapter 85, verse number 3, وَشَاهِدِ وَمَشْهُودِ by the witnessing day and by the witnessed day. So according to the hadith of Tirmizi, which is classified as Sahih by Shaykh Albani, that witnessed day is the day of Arafah in this ayah and witnessing day is Friday. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by a day or take an oath of the day, that shows the importance of that day. And another important thing which happened on this day, again, according to the narration of Ahmad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant from the offspring of the Adam. That is called as Ahd al-Alast. Or Ahd al-Alast. Ya khwal muslimin, before I continue, I would really like to ask everybody, ask yourselves, how many of us knows about this covenant? About this Ahd we had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, before I go into the details, if we do, alhamdulillah. But if we don't, then what excuse do we have of not knowing it? So, in the narration of the Ahmad, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala took the covenant from the offsprings of Adam, that is Adam alayhi salam, on this day, on the day when he took, it was the day of Arafah. And there is no greater day than this and no greater covenant than this. So what is the covenant? The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7, verse number 172 and 173, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ 
ذریت ہوں وین اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ اور یور لارڈ ٹک دا چلڈرن آف ایڈم فرام دیئر لائنس Oh, this is not the animal lion, this is loins. That is basically a part situated on each side of the spinal column between the hip bone and the false ribs. So anyhow, when this happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took out the descendants of Adam and mind you that this was happening before this world. This is the time before Adam alayhi salam was, uh, his soul was breathed into his body. This is before that. And then what happened when he took out all the people from the Adam till the last person who's going to be born, all the males and females, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them out or made them, made their souls, then what happened? Allah And made them testify of themselves, saying to them, Am I not your Lord? See, Afan Muslimin, from this verse, what we understand is that no matter who you are, No matter where you live, no matter what you believe in, we are born with this instinct that there is a Rabb, there is a Lord. We are born with this thing inside our soul that there is a Creator, there is a Lord who is taking care of us and who is taking care of everything. who is the creator. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked all those souls, yours and mine, that am I not your Rabb? What was the answer? Qalu. We all said, Bala. Of course, yes. Shahidna, we have testified. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Anta qulu yawm al-qiyamati inna kunna an hadha ghafirin. Subhanallah. You have said this, so lest you should say on the day of resurrection, indeed we were of this unaware, we didn't know this. Now see, before I continue, Ya Khwal Muslimin, if we understand this part, then we would know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept on sending the messengers. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is the last one. Before him, Jesus, Isa alayhi salam. Before him, so on and so forth. It goes up to Moses and up to Abraham and up to Adam. All the prophets we believe in. And if somebody does not believe in Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Ishmael, of course he's not a Muslim. And Quran is the only book which speaks about the birth of Jesus, the birth of Mary, about Moses, about Abraham, about the whole story of Jews, about the whole story of Isa alayhi salam. Jesus, may peace, be, peace and blessings be upon him. So, all these people were sent to this world to remind us, you and me, that see, don't forget, you took the covenant, you agreed on that day that, yeah, oh Rabb, yeah Allah, you are our Rabb, you are our Lord. So they keep on reminding us. They kept on reminding us. They kept on reminding to the people of their time. And then Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, when he came, he was given the book, Quran, which is going to be until the day of judgment, that's what we believe in, and is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this book says the same thing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that don't forget, don't say that I was unaware on the day of resurrection. Or you should say that it was only that our fathers associated Others in worship with Allah before and we were but descendants after them. In other words, we cannot say, oh, you know what, Ya Rab, I saw my father doing that, so I was doing it. Or you know what, I was born in a culture where it was normal to associate partners, so I just did it. Or because the family I came from, my descendants, they were like this. So in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in front of our Lord, we are all answerable about ourselves. Over there, this excuse will not be accepted that I was from so-and-so country, I was from so-and-so nation, I was from so-and-so family, I believed in so-and-so thing. It's you, or I'll say, it's me, and it's my Lord. We're facing each other, he's asking, and I'm answering. Oh, it gives me goosebumps. And then, أَفَتُّحْلِكُنَا بِمَا فَعَلَ الْمُبْطِلُونَ Then you, then would you destroy us for what falsifiers have done? This is what people are saying. So, Ikhwan Muslimin, again, as we have mentioned, it is our duty. 
as a human being, the very first thing to find out that what is the purpose of our life. When we die and we are buried, the angels would come. Munkar, Nakir. What is the first question they would ask? If you know, Alhamdulillah. If you don't, ask yourself why not. The first question they are going to ask is, Man Rabbuka. Who is your Lord? Right now, it's very easy for us to say, yeah, my Rabb is Lord. Uh, my Lord is Allah. My Rabb is Allah. But ya khwal muslimin, if right now somebody would ask you to define what is Allah, what answer do we have? If right now somebody would ask you, tell me what are the rights of your Allah? What are the rights of your Rabb? What answer do we have? Ma dinuka. What was your religion? What was the system of life you were following? Oh, it's easy to say Islam. But right now, if somebody would ask you to define Islam, what answer do we have? If right now somebody would ask you that, okay, you claim that you are the best nation only because you were born as a Muslim and you never learned about it, what answer do we have? And Man Rasuluka, who was your prophet? Who was the Rasul who was sent to you? It's easy for us to say Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. By Khwal Muslimin, put a hand on your heart and ask for ask yourself that how many of us, how many of us have read the biography of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? When was the last time you went through his sayings, a hadith? How many of us have read Rizal Salihin or uh, the 40 hadith of Imam Nawi, or how many of us knows that what, the, what are the books of hadith or how many of us knows that how many kinds of sunnah are there how many kinds of hadith are there what is hadith al-fi'li hadith al-taqriri hadith al-amri how, how many of us knows that if we don't then in that grave we'll be all lost we don't know what's happening so if all muslim mean from this hadith, scholars, they all say, or they all have come up, they all, they all have established that it is fard, obligatory on every person, every person, doesn't matter where you're from, to know about your Lord, to know about your Rabb, to know about what you're following, to know about what you believe in. And if we have not done it, no excuse is going to save us on the day of judgment. So coming back, the day of Arifah is the day of forgiveness. It is day of freedom from the fire, especially for the people who have went for Hajj and even for us, even if we have not been there, even if we have not, if we are not there right now, or we will not be there on day of judgment, uh, I'm sorry, the day of Arafah, we can still do that from our home, from our office, from the masjid. We can still seek forgiveness. We can still ask for forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallam says in the narration of Muslim, there is no day on which Allah frees more people from the fire than the day of Arafah. He comes close and expresses his pride to the angels saying, what do these people want? In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so willing to forgive people that he would say, just tell me what you want and you'll have it. Ya Khwal Muslimin, see when we go through the different narrations and the whole context of Quran, we would see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just looking for an excuse to forgive us. Yeah, you do this, you'll be forgiven. You do this, you'll be forgiven. You fast, you're forgiven. You give zakah, you're forgiven. You believe in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're forgiven. And, 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 and. In this context, we need to understand one thing, which is very important. Somebody asked me this. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to put it in the, I'll, I'll just summarize the answer. See, let's say a student is being told by his teacher that, see, my dear, my dear student, you have only one chance to pass the test which is going to come up. It will be a surprise test. Anytime it can happen, be prepared for it. Tell me what you want, I'll help you. 
You need books, lectures, you need logical answers, you need emotion. What do you need? Tell me and I'll help you because there is only one chance. If you will not pass this test, which is be surprised, which will be surprising test, then there is no way you will have another chance. And then this teacher tries to convince a student with any possible argument or with anything or with any question the student would ask. Now suddenly there's a test and student fails. He realized that he failed. Now he goes back to the teacher and now he starts begging, please, one more chance, just one more chance. And the teacher says, too late. I told you, it will be a surprise. I told you, it's going to happen. But at that time, you were busy enjoying yourself, not giving attention to what advices I was giving you. See, Ikhwan Muslimin, we are the student. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our teacher. He keeps on reminding us. إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Yani, Quran is full of these things. Don't you see the heavens? Don't you see the earth? Don't you see the seas? Don't you see the flowers? Don't you see the trees? Don't you see the animals? Don't you see how this whole system is working? Why don't you turn towards Allah? And imagine on the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us all these things, that everything was there around you, all you had to do was just turn to me, all you had to do was use your little common sense, and you would have known what I was talking about. And then tell or ask yourself, what excuse would we have to give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that please give me one more chance? None. Honestly, none. So, Khal Muslimin, it's very important for us. The very first thing that we should learn about our Lord, Man Rabbuka, we should know about the system of life, deen, religion we are following, Ma Deenuka. We should know about the person we take as an example in our life, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man Rasuluka. So, Khal Muslimin, that is why. And one more thing I'd like to say, you know, when you'll start learning about these things, shaitan would come. Oh, devil, our great enemy in the, how do you say, you know, in uh, posing as our best friend. He would come and let's say, you know, I'm reading Quran. I open and I say, you know, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And then I go to the uh, translation. And it says, you know, Alhamd means so and so, uh, all the praises, and Lillahi, and then Rab, and then Alameen. And then Qatada says this, and then, you know, uh, Ibn Abbas said this, and in Tafsir al jarir it says this, and Saadi has said this. And the Shaitan said, well, do you know about all these people? And of course I don't. So he said, you know what? Close the book, put it down, go and read about them first. Okay, you went there. I say, you know what, Ibn Abbas said about the hadith, that this is za'if, this hadith is marfu, mawquf. I said, you know about this? And I said, no. So, okay, close the book. Go and read about the hadith first. So shaitan would keep on deviating you from one thing to other, so you wouldn't learn. Say, Khwal Muslimin, it is very important for us to start with a small book. Start with any book of aqidah any book of Iman, any small book with the basic information. Because when the foundation is built on understanding of who your Rabb, your Lord is, then it will be very easy for you to understand what He wants from us and why He has sent us into this world. So few of the things we should do on this day, Akhwan Muslimin, is to make dua. Prophet Muhammad has said in the narration of Tirmidhi that the day of, uh, in the day of Arfa, there is an hour which no believing worshipper makes a supplication to Allah for good except that Allah answers it. And he does not seek Allah's protection from evil except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects him from it. Say, Khal Muslimin, it's a great opportunity. And of course, while doing this, we must not forget our family, friends, and all the people who are in trouble, and especially the people who have passed away. We should fast on this day. In fact, we should fast, we should have been fasting all the nine days, but especially on the day of Arafah is a must. If you have not started fasting, 
Saturday and Sunday, weekends, at least do on that. And then on Tuesday, please do fast again. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in the narration of Muslim that fasting on the day or on the day of Arafah expiates the sin of the past year and the coming year. That is, those sins will be forgiven. Past year, what we have lived, coming year, which is going to come. So, Yaqwal Muslimin, it's an amazing opportunity for us to be forgiven, even for something we have not done. How? I don't want to go into that. The time does not permit me to do that. And, of course, as I said before, so I'm just going to remind that we must not fast on the day of Eid, because Prophet Muhammad forbade fasting on any Eid, either be Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Adha. And, of course, we should not fast on the days of the Shariq, 11th, 12th, and 13th, Prophet Muhammad forbade and said that these are the days of eating and drinking. Other thing, Ya Khalil Muslim, mean we should do is seek forgiveness. One of the very important things. See, right now, I'll, I'll tell you the importance. I would like you to look at it this way. Right now, if somebody would ask you, are you going to go to hell? Wallahi, I can say 99% of people say, no. Why would I go to hell? What have I done? What is there? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send me to hell. You're not, going to, you're not going to say it loud. Of course not. But this is what is going on here and here. You know why? Because we have taken certain things for granted. Because I'm from so and so nation. Because I believe in so and so thing. Because I believe in so and so person. Because I said, Ashad Allah ilaha illallah ashad al So no way I'm going to go to hell. No way. Whereas on the other side, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray tahajjud, the night prayer, and he would cry. And he said in one of the narration that nobody would enter Jannah, nobody, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would cover him with his blessings. So one of the companions asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa even you? He said, even me? Imagine the Prophet is seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking his blessings, and on the contrary, us, he's a Prophet, us, was all, of course not. Look into yourselves if I'm telling you the truth or not. Shaykh al Muslimin, seek forgiveness. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum razalim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa kana abab. Rabbi jalli muqimu salati wa min dhuriyyati. Rabbana utqabbal dhuha. Rabbana kulli wali walidiyya wa lil mu'minina yawmi kum nisa. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani wa na'abduk wa na'lahtika wa adika mustata'atu. A'udhu bika min shari ma sana'atu. Ubu ilaka bina ma'atika liya. Ubu bithan bifakfir li. Fa innahu la yakfir li dhunubayn. There are so many du'as. But please, if you don't know the meaning, read the meaning. Otherwise, you wouldn't know what you're saying. You wouldn't be able to connect. Let's say for some reason, you, don't, you can't get to hold of these du'as. Ask whatever you want. Just say, Ya Rab, forgive me. Ya Allah, please forgive me. Enough. The more du'as you know, the better for you. The minimum you know is still acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wherever you are. You are driving. You are at your home. You are in the masjid, whatever you are doing, please do that. Other thing, make dhikr. On that day and even in the other days, it is prescribed, of course, from the beginning of this month for the first 10 days as one of the dhikr, what we say even on the day of Eid, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, You should say as, as much as possible and in the narration of Ahmad, Prophet Muhammad says that recite a great deal of this dua. It is called as Tahleel, Takbir, and Tabheed. That Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. And you can also say Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al Azim, 100 times. And of course, one of the best duas which was given to every Prophet La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, wa lahu alhamdu, la sharika lahu, la hul mulku, wa lahu alhamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. We should make it a habit, even out of these days, to say this dua at least 100 times. But especially these days, we should try to say this as much as possible. Other thing, Ya Khan Muslimin, please get some time to pray the Eid prayer. This is a duty of every Muslim, and according to the most strongest opinion, of course, there are always opinions, but according to the most of the scholars, it is a duty of every Muslim and it is obligatory of, on a person, of course, on a man if he is not traveling. And if there are no excuses, a person do not pray without any excuses, then that person is committing a sin. 
Of course, it is a way that we show our identity as a community as well. And Prophet Muhammad always attended the Salatul Eid, the prayer of Eid, and he encouraged everyone to attend, even the women who are menstruating. Prophet Muhammad said that they should also come and get the blessings. They do not have to come for the prayer, of course they can't, but they can still join whatever is going on in the dua of, uh, you know, in, in the sermon which is going to happen in the dua. And they can, of course, sit at the uh, whatever place is available for them. In other words, Prophet Muhammad encouraged to do this, to pray the salat. Then, Udiya, please, if you can, sacrifice. Make make arrangements that to, for the sacrifice, if you can. When Prophet Muhammad was asked in the narration of Muslim Ahmad and Ibn Majah, companions asked Prophet Muhammad that why should we sacrifice? Because they used to do it anyway. So they asked that what is so important about this day, that why should we do it? So Prophet Muhammad said, you have to do it because Sunnah to Abikum Ibrahim, that this is the Sunnah of your father, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So as I've said, that we Muslims believe in all the prophets and Prophet Ibrahim, forefathers, and all Muslims, Jews and Christians, we believe in Ibrahim alayhi salam as father of our nation. So this for us, Prophet Muhammad replied that this is the sunnah of your father. How about a person who does not offer sacrifice? Ya Khan Muslimin, before I say anything about that, let's, let, let's put it in this way, that Prophet Muhammad never omitted, he never skipped sacrifice. From the time it was obligatory on him, he always did it. And we all know that there were some times in his house when he even didn't have anything to eat for two to three days. He would only drink zamzam or maybe some dates if he had. So Khan Muslimin, if we can, we must. However, if we cannot, because of whatever reason, of course, then it's not obligatory, but it is encouraged. And whoever wants to offer sacrifice, it is strongly recommended that that person should not cut his nail or hair from the beginning of the Dhul Hijjah till the time he offers the sacrifice. And then this ruling of not cutting the hair, hair and nail only applies to the person who is offering the sacrifice and not to the whole family. And last but not least, Ikhwan Muslimin, please take some time out to appreciate Islam, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with. As I had mentioned that on this day, on the previous khutbah, Prophet Muhammad said that on this day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected your religion for you. Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena, that this day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for your and has chosen for you Islam as a religion, according to Bukhari and Muslim. Say Khan Muslimin again, before I continue, we all claim to be Muslims. How many of us have read the translation of Quran from Alham to Wannas, chapter one to chapter fourteen? Only translation. How many times? Okay, I'll make it a little easier. Ramadan have just passed by about two months ago. How many of us read Quran after that? Forget about completion, just read Quran after that. How many of us changed from Ramadan till this time? Shaykh Khan Muslimin, if we did not, that means we do not appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. That means something is wrong here. Something is wrong with the Iman. Something is wrong where, with our beliefs. And we have taken a lot of things for granted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes things easier for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us understand the greatness of this day and help us perform the best possible deeds with the purest of intention, inshallah. Whatever good in this khutbah was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there was a mistake that was from my weakness. Coming to a few reminders, Ya Khan Muslimin, thank you very much for coming for the Juma prayer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your efforts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your deeds, your time and bless you, your family, your health, your wealth, your everybody, your every aspect of life. Your feedback is always welcome. Please do let me know if there is something where I can improve on. Today is Friday, so don't forget to read Surah Kahf. We have time until before Maghrib. 
Quran is the medicine of soul, is advice, guidance, mercy, cure. Only if read with understanding, only if read with translation, then only it would help you. Otherwise, you will just get rewards. And if you wouldn't know how to protect those rewards, it's just going to get wasted. Different projects are going on in the masjid, as we all know. As I always say, that Allah's works does not stop because I don't want to give money. I give or I donate because I want that ajr for reward for myself, which should keep, which should keep on going even after I die. I'll give you an example, Ikhwan Muslim. When this masjid was built, not everybody donated money. Maybe somebody came and helped with the walls. Maybe somebody came and helped with the windows. Maybe somebody came and helped with the lights, with all those little small things. They may not have donated, but they may just have given their time to fix, to, to uh, build the thing. Till from that time, till today up to this moment, the ajar is being recorded. Some of them may not, may not be with us anymore. But this ajar is going to keep on going until this masjid is here. Until somebody would learn something from here, would go and teach others, and they would teach others, and it will keep on going. The ajr would keep on going. And on top of that, whoever donated money and whatever. So, Akhwal Muslimin, ajr is something we always look for. And donation is one of the ways to do that. Uh, we have weekly Quran classes, understanding in Urdu, that, that is on Wednesday, 4.15. Every Wednesday at 4.15, it goes on up to 40 to 45 minutes. And in English, Every Sunday after Maghrib, it is for about 20 minutes. Alhamdulillah, we have weekly Quran halqa. Every Sunday after Fajr, we read Quran together and correct each other. Let's not forget, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Khayrukum man ta'allam al-Quran wa allamahu. The best of you are, or the best among you are those who learn the Quran and teach it. So, Ikhwan Muslimin, we have a lot going on. So, please take some time out of your busy schedule and see if you can join us. If you want barakah in your time, if you want the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your time, in your work, in your family, in your wealth, in your health, turn to Allah. That's the only way. Because don't forget, I'm sure there are examples in front of you, people would work for 12 hours, 13 hours, 7 weeks a day, still they would complain. Compared to, there are some people who would work probably 5 hours, uh, 5 days a week, they are just hand to mouth and they're very happy. All the peace in the world. This is the blessing. This is the barakah. That whatever you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it sufficient for you. So if you want that sufficiency in your life, if you want that blessings of the risk in your life, turn towards Allah. Ya Khal Muslimin, one of the most dangerous weapon of shaitan is, well, I heard this lecture. Oh, I, I did this. Wallahi, I can tell you from my experience, if you really want to learn, you have to come to the gatherings. You have to come and listen to others what others have to say. You have to come and ask. You have to come and listen. You have to come and tell. That is the only way. Oh, I'll, I'll change. That is the only best way to learn and to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Akhwal Muslimin, uh, this masjid belongs, of course, to the community. So if somebody needs to arrange any program, please contact Brother Amir after the uh, Salah. He can help you. Eid will be on Wednesday, June 28th, inshallah. Masjid have booked a place in Hillendale Park, Shelter 9 for picnic on July 1st. Uh, coming to other things, discussion with children at home. Dear Muslimin, please take... Okay, fine. Uh, we will uh, please have some discussion with your children at home. It's very important. Please do so. Because nowadays, the fitna of godless society is on our heads. With these all mobiles and programs and R-Tube and S-Tube and you know, YouTube and MeTube, all the dirt and all the wrong things are getting into the minds of our children. Please take some time out. Speak to them. Talk to them and see what they're doing. How they're thinking. So at least 
you can let them know that what is going on. Uh, you, you would know that what is going on with them. What is how you can help them to become a better person, to become a better Muslim. And dear Khwal Muslimin, please do come to the Fajr prayer. As I always say, one of at least one day in a week, inshallah, it would help. So may I be at the end, may we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal all the sick people, bless them with the best of the health blessings, take away all their troubles and worries, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take the worries and problems of all the Muslims and all the people around the world who are suffering, who are in pain, who are in trouble because of their religion, race, or because of the hate. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make those people example to others who are doing it because of these things. And of course, I found Muslim need, last but not least, people who have died, they are the most deserving of our prayers. See, somebody have or other, we all lose somebody we love. So please do remember them in your du'as. People do reach out to me and they ask me to make special du'as. Of course, I cannot go and take the names of everybody, but please, whoever have passed, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive their problems or their mistakes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive their sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase their good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the du'as and the prayers of their families, friends and others in their favor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes their journey to the grave easy, of the grave easy. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them from the people of success in hereafter, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this deen and dunya easy for us and grant us the honor of sharing its ease with others, inshallah. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khari khalqa ijma'in bi rahmatika ya rahmeen wa akhuru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.